Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses. Today we're going to be talking about our top 10 most popular plants that our customers have interest in. And interestingly enough, most of them are house plants. Our first one is the Abuka Frizzle Sizzle. This is the one with the little curly cues on the top of it, and it has a flower spike coming out of it. The flowers are actually fragrant. It needs a sunny window, and it goes into a summer dormancy if you put it under a lot of drought stress. If you don't cut the flower spikes off, the curl goes away, but we have found that not to necessarily be true. The curl, you can let them flower and the curl actually does return, but if you wanna make sure you have the curl, cut the flowers off, although there's a really great fragrance here, so I would definitely leave them on. Next we have our Moria Conigia. This is a small seedling that we've grown. They always look like palm trees like that, so don't worry about it. They actually are great houseplants. I have one in an east window. It's been there for years. And the key to it is to dry the soil down between waterings a little bit. Make sure it's up against the glass, fertilize it, and in the wintertime, be sure to grow it a little bit drier because the root systems are not active and they need that period of dryness. This is actually used in culinary work, used in curries, and they only use a leaf or two at a time. So a plant like this, you could actually start harvesting some of the leaves off, not too many. The key is to get them through the winter time with that little bit of dryness. This is another favorite. This is the vanilla vine. And yes, you can make vanilla out of it, but you have to be very patient. A young vine like this is gonna grow slowly and it's gonna take many years for it to come into flower. Normally you'd put them on something that they would support. These aerial roots that you can see right here are, would stick to that support. They need to be grown in an epiphytic mix, meaning a lot of air in the mix, and then brought to near dryness between waterings. A little tricky in terms of um, keeping the root system healthy, but once you get that down, they're a pretty vigorous plant. And being an orchid, as I mentioned, they're slow. They also need a fair amount of good light, but not harsh sunshine. So this would be a great plant for an east to west window. Probably not a north window, it'll grow there, but the flowering may be reduced on that. Next, we have Alocasia Frydeck. This is actually a favorite of mine. We have a plant that's probably 25 years old, and it's got this beautiful leaf color and patterning to it. It gets to be a fairly large plant, probably about that big. Grows very well under low light. Just be aware that it can go into that winter dormancy where the leaves are not actually perfect. But other than that, it's quite easy to grow. Always with these slower growing alocasias, bring the soil down to some dryness between waterings to keep them healthy. Everyone knows this, this is the moth orchid. Great house plant. Lots of hybrids have been done with this, so there's all kinds of color forms. The key to growing them, and they're really not hard, is to manage your watering properly as it is with all orchids. Saturate it, get it really soaked, and then go and let it dry out. It may take a week or so. Interesting enough, it's in the wintertime when the house is dry that they need more, uh, more moisture, but very easy to grow. Grow this in the east, a west, or even a north window. You want the foliage to be a little light colored like that. If it gets dark green, that's probably too little light, but they're really resilient plants. Generally what we do once the flower spikes are gone is we snap them all off, let them go back into growth. If you need to repot it in the springtime, just as they start to put out new growth, you can see the root tips starting to grow. That's a great time to repot them. Very easy to grow, lots of flowers. Flowers last for weeks. Um, it's a plant that you can't go wrong with. This has become very popular. We've had this around forever here at Logies. This is Philodendron melanochrysum, black philodendron, and it's a climber. You can see it's going vertical. Generally, if you're growing this as a specimen, I would stick it on a board or a plank or something up behind it because it wants to go up. These are juvenile leaves. You gotta remember, if you let that run as this goes vertical, those leaves get bigger and bigger and bigger until they're about yay big, a huge. But they'll still make a great houseplant. And they've all, often been grown over the years just like this with small leaves where they drape over and they never get big. Has to climb for that mature leaf to appear. This is an interesting plant. We've had this around forever. This is a Synagonium. Synagoniums are really easy plants to grow. I mean, we have Synagoniums that have gotten away from us and they're living under the benches and every now and then they poke up and they come out and there's a Synagonium, we have to cut them back. And they're happy campers here at Logies. This one has this beautiful variegation into it. It's what we call an unstable variegation. So you see there's a half a green, half a white leaf and, and one in between. So they can get to the point where they'll throw out an all green or an all white leaf. And at that point, you need to go back down to where that good variegation is, make the cut and let it shoot out again. You can keep it a little on the dry side and keep it wet, doesn't seem to mind. And it is a climber. 
And so you either let it climb up something or you turn it around itself or you let it drape over a basket, but it's going to run somewhere. It wants to go um, in the upward direction. This is an interesting plant that we grow. We've had it for many years. This is Philodendron Pink Princess. Uh, very popular right now. It has these beautiful pink patterned variegation in the leaves. And the variegation comes and goes, but occasionally we have one that goes all white or all pink, and we have one that goes all green. But you can always recover that by making the cut below that. The leaves will get much larger than this as it matures, but they're starting to increase a little bit in size here. Philodendrons are easy to grow, as everyone knows. You keep them in a window somewhere, east, west, north. Uh, I probably wouldn't put them in a south window. They're really somewhat of an understory plant, although they can handle more light than you'd think. It's quite easy to grow and makes a great indoor plant. This is another interesting plant that we have. This is Hoya carii, and we grow a lot of Hoyas here at Logies. I've always been a fan of them. Not only are they indestructible, but they have beautiful leaf patterns, and um, some of them have gorgeous flowers, and some of them have really intense fragrances, and the fragrances actually can be different between species. And they're, as I mentioned, they're really easy to grow. They're great house plants. Most of them grow epiphytically in the tropical forest, so they take that dryness, tough leaves. This is a plant that you can go on vacation for three, four, five weeks, come back, and it's just sitting there waiting for you to give it a drink. They are somewhat slow. They don't grow as fast as many other things. Certainly, if you haven't grown Hoyas, and I hope you have, but if you haven't, pretty much all of them are easy to grow, and they're great house plants. And lastly, we have a really great allocation, Maharani. When I first saw this, I said, it's not real. It's got to be plastic. This has got to be something that came out of one of those artsy stores where you decorate your house. And I looked at it, and it is real. Very slow grower, has this really tough leaf. Again, allocations, you dry them down between waterings a little bit. You grow them in the east, west, or north window. Don't put them in the south window. These are plants that grow way underneath the canopy of the jungle forest and just be patient with it. And it will just be this beautiful plant that looks like plastic that lives in your house. And anybody that looks at it will first think it's not real. So there you go. These are some of the 10 most popular plants that we grow. Hope you enjoyed that. Visit us at logis.com if you want more information.